So we will be anointing you after service. Praise God. Hallelujah. I bring greetings also from Pastor Zan. I was talking to her this morning. They are actually moving to another city. Amen. Enjoying themselves without us. Very unfair. <clears throat> Amen. Praise God. So let's go to the word of God. I, I want to give you just four keys for every son of God that is ordained and anointed for this season to do the works of God. Four weapons that you need to have for the manifestation of the sons of God. God expects sons to manifest. God expects sons to manifest. You know, all along, we were sharing uh, and, and saying to you, it is not wise for us to keep talking to children. We have to grow as a church. Galatians chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible says as long as the heir is still a child, it's not different from a servant, though he be Lord of all. It's not wise for you to be Lord of all and not enjoy the all. What limits you? It is the level of your growth. So growing spiritually is not something that we need to beg you. We command you to grow. You can't at this time be still struggling with flesh. Because only children struggle with flesh, carnality. Do you know what carnality is? You are moved by what you see with your natural eyes. You are moved by what you hear with your natural senses. So you are moved by senses than the truth. So let truth govern your life. The Bible says put on the belt on your waist of truth. You know, the body is secured by the waist. If you, Jacob, God touched his hip and then he was limping because that is where uh, your weight balances around the. So the Bible says, put on truth around your weight so that you can be balanced in life. It is truth that will balance you. It is truth that will cause you to walk right. Truth. Pilate says, what is truth? Because truth only came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So there was no truth before Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verse 17. Truth and grace came through Jesus Christ. So people who only knew facts, they never knew truth. That's why he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Truth only came through Jesus Christ. So what is truth? Truth, it is God. It is his word. Let me break it down to say it is his word. Because in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. And nothing that we see today was not created by the word. Everything was created by the word. It came about because of the word. So we know that truth is the word. Sanctify them Lord by your word. For thy word is truth. John chapter 17. So sanctify them by your word. Because thy word is truth. So the word of God is what? Truth. So, la grasti mahashuna. So, let me give you the weapons for you to be able to manifest. Number one weapon, number one weapon, praise God, is light. We have spoken much about light. Light is. Oh, light is understanding. Light comes from the word of God and light is what makes you known in the realm of the spirit. You are known through light. <laughs> when the enemy is looking at you, is looking at how much light you carry. 
Like he cannot see you as you. He can see your light. If I can impart my light to you, the enemy will see my light on you. <laughs> um, so, I'm, I'm casting out this demon in Swaziland. And then the demon says, what is Apostle Saul's fire doing here? So he was not here. But sometime ago, he had prayed for me. So I'm carrying his anointing, his light on me. So I'm approaching this demon. It sees the light of that man on me. Not me. So today, I want you to leave this place carrying this light Amen. that will subdue every form of darkness in your life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, light is number one weapon. Let us break it down. Light is number one weapon. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 18. May just do more word because then time for their moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning is clouded. They are alienated and self banished from the life of God with no share in it. This is because of the willful ignorance and spiritual blindness that is deep-seated within them because of the hardness of an insensitivity of their heart. So they have no understanding or they have no light. So when you don't have light, this is what the scripture is saying. Your, 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 your reasoning, your light is darkened. Because of the blindness that is deceited within you because of hardness and insensitivity of your heart. So the heart needs to be broken. Breaking the fallow ground of your heart. So that the word of God can be received and begin to bear fruit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. Matthew 5 16. The Bible says, let your light shine therefore before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds and moral excellence and recognize and honor and glorify your father who is in heaven. So the father can only be glorified by our light. So let our light shine. Now, can you see that light is connected to the life that we demonstrate? So the life that you live the life that you live, that means you live according to understanding, you live according to under knowledge. So the knowledge that you display is what we call light. Please come with me. Amen. Amen. Or oh, we don't understand, come again. Something, Amen. something, not silence. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm saying, you know, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good deeds. So the deeds are connected to your light. So whatever you are doing, whatever you are displaying, people only see the good deeds and they call that light or the scriptures call that light. It means people can walk in your light when they are following your deeds. They are walking in your light. So if you are not doing anything to show forth what you understand about the life of God, your light is not shining. So doing scripture is shining the light. You know, sometimes, I don't know, for some reason, this thing of light and shining our light, we have never really connected to the deeds. Do you know how Christians have been all this time? We talk a lot and do little. Yes. It is in the doing that then we know that the light of God is there. Amen. It is not in the talk. 
Everyone talks. Do you know how many religions that are close to Christianity? <laughs> even those who are worship ancestors, they are so close, they even carry their Bibles into Indumba. And they quote the scriptures, but they still believe in ancestors. So close. But now when it comes to the deeds, then the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. In other words, by their deeds, then you will know who they are connected to. You can't then be associated with bad deeds. Because then it will... Show us a wrong picture of your connection. See, that's why we need ma to mature. Because as long as we're still children, we get angry and manifest like everyone else who's not born again. My mother used to... <laughs> My mother used to say, you know, you must stop watching a lot of TV. Because you then copy what these white people do when they are angry. Like throwing plates everywhere. <laughs> I watched the other day a woman so angry in a bar. Went straight to, for a man. You know, it's normal for white people, white ladies to do that. Unfortunately, that was a different guy. Boah, back. <laughs> she flew, <laughs> fell right there. She picked herself up and walked away sheepishly. You see, when you are still young, you copy. You copy wrong things. That's what the Bible says. You know, bad Friends corrupt good character. If you have bad friends, I know people who were never, they don't know how to lie. But you are connected to a friend who's a liar. It flows in her toes. It, everywhere. <laughs> she, just, she just opens her mouth and lies. And she's now aware of herself. And she says, I don't know what happens. Even when I know the truth and I'm not intimidated, just lies come. <laughs> now, there you are, you are a friend. Do you know that you start lying as well? Because you are connected to the wrong friend. Amen. Praise God. We're talking about light. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Isaiah chapter, arise, shine for your light has come. So arise, you can only arise when the light has come. So light does come. Amen. Then it causes you to arise and shine. So arise from your spiritual depression. <laughs> oh, yo, yo. To a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory and the brilliance of the Lord. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Now, light, light comes. Light comes. So let us look at that, because we want the light to come. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 130. Psalms 119, verse 130. You guys are supposed to be knowing these scriptures by now. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the unfolding of your glorious words give light. The unfolding, the revelation of your word. You know, when the word is revealed, remember what we said about revelation. Revelation, we said, it is Apostle Tyler behind the curtain. I, I am concealed. I'm a mystery. I'm not revealed. So what is revelation? Remove the curtain. Then you see Mr. Apostle Twala. Amen. <laughs> then you see Apostle Twala. So revelation, it is actually the removal of the veil that causes us not to see what God is saying. 
So the Bible says here, now the unfolding or the revelation of your word gives light. So light is not just direct from the word. It is a revealed word that brings light. It, it, what is a revealed word? It means uh, it is a word that is so explained to you to a point where you said, oh, I see. So the picture must be created in your mind until you say, I see. Amen. Remember, our eyes do not see. We see with our mind. Amen. You know biology, man. You don't see with your eyes. Your eyes are just windows. But the thing that sees is your mind. That's why a blind person can describe certain things. Though he cannot see with his eyes. Because he sees with his mind. So, let the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Let the eyes of your mind be open. So that you can see. So light will come to you according to the unveiling of the word. The understanding of the word. Above all, you're getting get understanding. Get understanding. So according to Mark chapter 4 verse 24. According to the measure of your understanding, it shall be given to you. So light is given according to the measure of your understanding. Yo, I don't want to dwell on this, but I feel like there's a need for me to explain more and more. You know, your reign and rule in life is not sometimes according to the authority that you have as a child of God. But it is according to what you understand. The operation of power in your life as a child of God, it is according to the light or your understanding your, of, 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 the, of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Second Peter, is it Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4, it says um, the Lord has provided for us, according to his divine nature, he has provided, ay, 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 ay. put it up. Now by these we, uh, verse 4, Verse 3, sorry. Hmm. Uh, are you in verse 3? Yes. For his divine power has bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a di di dynamic spiritual life and, a god and godliness through, through and personal knowledge. Hey, oh, yo. Through true and personal knowledge. <laughs> Can I explain that? You do know that there's general knowledge. Where we are all announcing that we are raising a people of dominion and influence. If you have never had an encounter with dominion and influence, it remains a general truth. But when personally you've been impacted by that revelation, it becomes personal knowledge. Personal knowledge of the, it's some, sometimes when you're trying to explain what salvation is all about and what you feel when you are saved. It has to come at a personal level. You must experience it. And actually, most of the things that have to do with God, they must come through experience. If you have not experienced, you have not had an encounter. Mind you, experience in God does not literally mean a physical manifestation. You can experience prosperity only in the spirit by entering in the room of prosperity. Entering by revelation into the room of prosperity. Where your mind has entered, then the physical begins to respond and come in as well. Do, do you understand that? So you can shift into prosperity before physical manifestation. You can shift into divine health before physical manifestation. So here we know that it is a personal, personal, personal experience. Amen. So when you have knowledge of him, personal knowledge... 
working knowledge. Hmm. Experiential knowledge. Yo, guys. How many of you know John chapter 3 verse 16? Even a drunkard knows John 3 16. But he continues to be drunk and walk in ignorance of the goodness of God. But those who have, 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 have had an encounter with John 3, 16, their lives are transformed. Amen. This is what I'm talking about. So the Bible says, the divine power has provided for us everything that we need. <laughs> I need to move on. That has to do with spiritual life and also the life that we live here the physical life we have been given you know i command every form of frustration in your life to go as this light and understanding enters into your life you are not stranded you are not frustrated you are not depressed Position yourself rightly in knowledge. Enter. Do you know it's possible to enter into a place of peace? The Bible says they never mix the word of God with faith. The one they, and they never entered the rest of God because they were, did not mix. So what is this thing of mixing the word with faith? Then enter rest. <sighs> if you believe what is being preached and then... Faith says you act according to what you believe. Then you enter into rest in that area where you have believed. So there are people here who are frustrated because they have not received the word that causes them to enter into rest. You rest as far as man is concerned. When you have understood what I was totally telling you about last Sunday. I was telling you that, you know, he cares for you the way a man is responsible over his wife. Proper man. A man is responsible over his wife, providing, nurturing his wife, making sure the wife dresses well. Even if he, he does not dress well, but as long as the wife dresses well, then we know the guy also is good inside. <laughs> We can't have the wife hanging here and you're the only one looking nice. Something is wrong with that picture. <laughs> Let the Lord continue to nurture us, provide for us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, this is our weapon, the light. Light is our weapon. When you have received light, you have received a weapon to overcome all forms of darkness. Amen. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 5, you know, and, and the life of God was the light of man, and light came, and darkness could not comprehend it, Amen. could not resist the light. When light has come, darkness has to go. Hey, can I help you? Amen. Because you, you, you troubled me on Thursday, you want deliverance. Do you know? That if you don't want to line up for deliverance, line up for light. Amen. When you receive light, any form of darkness in your life flees. It just disappears. It just goes. There are things that you don't pray for. You just receive light and they disappear. Hey, come on. I say you receive light and this thing just disappears. If you live in fear all your life, all you need is light. Light is understanding. When you have understood, my God, ooh, you should hear when I declare that I cannot be sick. The doctor is here. I don't know how many times he's been called. We always fight. Because for me, I'm in another frequency. But I allow her because they have to be make sure that they test. But I just refuse. 
for me to, to allow that sickness to settle. Can I help you? Amen. Satan has never, never settled it in your life without your agreement. Amen. There must be a consent from you. Whether you do it in a dream. Because when he knows that you are not, you are not easy to fight physically. You know, when you are awake. Then he comes in a dream. There are these dreams where you are whipped. <laughs> you know these dreams where you wake up, you are tired because you are running. <laughs> or you are climbing some mountain and you couldn't get to the top. He gets you through the dream. Me, I took this thing to the dreamland. <laughs> I took the fight to the dreamland. I said, I will not wait for you uh, to, for me to wake up. I will hit you in the dream. So I am so conscious of my dreams in my dream. Such that when I am being chased by someone, I turn around in the dream because of my consciousness. I'm woke. The spirit does not sleep. So I start fighting back and chasing what is chasing me. Every time you see a snake, you better kill it in the spirit. Even if it has bitten you in the spirit, remove the poison in the dream from your body and put it back into the snake. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Light is a weapon. And the Bible says light is so sweet. Let light enter into your body. It causes even the simple to be raised in God. They have understanding. The simple have understanding because of light. Number two weapon. Praise God. We must be doers of the word. They know the Bible says in James chapter 1. You are like a verse 22. You are like a man who looks at himself on the mirror. And then walks away and forgets how he looks like. If you are not a doer of the word. Yo, 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 yo. Jesus. This is, this is for me. If you are unable to do the word, it means you saw the scriptures, but you forget, you forgot what the scriptures were saying about you. It's like when you are, you are reading a scripture and you're being encouraged, you are faithfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, God created you in secret. He, know, he knew your frame. Then one word from the enemy, you just get a re receive a phone call. That thing disappears. You feel like you are an ant or a grasshopper before these giants. And you feel like this thing is about to crush you. Just one phone call. After reading scriptures, you know what you have done? You have forgot what you looked like when you looked at yourself on the mirror. Because you are now not doing the word. Because every word the Lord gives you, because he day, gives us daily, our word he gives us daily, our bread he gives us daily. That means every day there's a victory scripture that God gives to you. And when the scripture is given to you, it's not every scripture. When the God gives you that scripture, you must know there's a war, a fight that is coming and it's coming for that scripture. You better use that scripture against the the enemy that is coming. That means every time you receive a word, you must know the enemy is coming for that word. What are you going to do about the word? Are you going to listen to the things that the Satan is saying? The other thing is that uh, when, when people speak to us, you know, uh, because of the physical world, it, it seems like it's more real. It's more real that now they have called you and told you that you only have seven days to pay. Uh, it's more real because now they have called you, they told you that we're closing you down. So that is more real than what has God has said. You know, I think we are the people who need uh, to come up higher. Amen. Come up higher to the word so that we can use who we are and what has been given to us to fight such physical things. Every natural thing is temporal. I say every natural thing is temporal. We live in the unseen world. So we know that when we receive the word, that is what will stand. Not this physical world. So we are doers of the word. Let us look at Leviticus chapter 9 verse 6. 
Leviticus chapter 9 verse 6. Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord has commanded to you to do. So that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. So if you don't do it, the glory will not, won't appear. This is what the God has commanded you to do. If you don't do it, no glory. We must stop being hypocrites. We like blaming God. If uh, Adam said it's the, it's the woman, and the woman says it's a snake, and the snake took authority and because he took responsibility. Take responsibility of what is going on in your life. Did you do the word of God so that the glory may appear? If you didn't do it, so why are you complaining? We fasted the whole month. 21 days fasting. You were eating. <laughs> but you expect the glory. You expect the change of life. You, you expect... To, the, today we're breaking the fast. For you, you broke the No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, we, 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 we like to remove ourselves and then shift the blame. Did you do the word? Did you do the word? You know, you can't be complaining about your financial difficulty when you have difficulty in tithing. Do you know that we have so many reasons why we're not tithing? So many. And it's worse now that you collected some information from the social media where others were saying tithing is for the Old Testament. You said, Gamma, yo, man. <laughs> and you've been following that thing, and then it is going nowhere, and it disappears. Only to find that these guys who are saying this are actually saying you should pay more than 10% in the New Testament. You are so happy. Yet these guys are setting you up to pay more. Guys, as long as you are not doing the word... As long as you are not doing the word. Don't expect. God is not mocked. You only reap what you have sown. You reap. You, you, sow, you sow in the flesh. You will reap rivers. Is it rivers? That, that uh, thing you watch on TV. The river. <laughs> rivers. <laughs> No, that's my rivers of living water. <laughs> it's called the river. You know, if you keep watching that, and you, that's all you keep putting in and bringing in and pumping into your life, that's what the Bible says you will reap destruction. But if you keep investing in your spiritual life, eternity is yours. Progress in the things of God is yours. Victory is yours in God. So let us be doers of the word. Ah, God Almighty. Two. Okay, let me push. Let me not be defeated by time. Let me defeat time. Amen. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Let me overcome time. I'm going to be so fast. You are going to scream for me to stop. Amen. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Let this book of the Lord not depart from your mouth. You must meditate on it day and night so that you'll be able to do according to what is written. Amen. So that you'll be able to do according to so meditation and muttering the word of God causes you to do according to what is written. And in that way you will make all your ways, not some, all your ways prosperous. 
So prosperity is up to you. What do you do with the word? John, Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Your Psalms chapter, blessed, fortunate, and prosperous is and favored by God. Is a man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the, in the path of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Uh, in his, the law of the Lord does he meditate day and night. All right? Uh, and he will be like a tree firmly planted and fed by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither. And whatsoever he doeth, he prospers. Whatsoever you do, you prosper. Why? Because you have refused uh, to sit in the seat of the scornful. People who despise what we are and who we are have refused. What have you done? You have delighted yourself in the Lord. You have meditated on the word of the Lord day and night. Amen. Amen. Don't change. Because now it's night to meditate on other things. No, day and night. Amen. <laughs> Meditating on the word of the Lord. Amen. Then you will make all your ways prosperous. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, if you ever... Uh, do the commandments of the Lord. Are you there? Now it shall come to pass if you diligently listen and obey the voice of the Lord, you, your God, being careful to do all of his commandments, which I com am commanding you to you today. The Lord will, the Lord, your God will set you high above all other nations on earth. Jesus, that's where we are going. And all these blessings will come upon you and overtake, and overtake you if you pay attention to the voice of the Lord. So there are blessings that will overtake you if you pay attention to the voice of the Lord. So look, we must be doers of the word. Full stop, we must be doers of the word. You know, we, I always say, it's better for you if you are not doing this thing. Just go, we all go ever. You own your own child. Just go and steal. Once and for all. Because there's no way you are going to prosper here without doing this. Do you understand? So you will live in frustration. And this thing will create, you know, will create jealous in you. Because you, the person sitting next to you will be prosperous. Because you are, we are, we are Japanese. Then you create stories about the person. Oh, your mask. You don't even know where I stay. What the problem is that when I was doing the word, you were not doing the word. So now this thing is affecting you. Be a doer of the word. Let, choose, choose which way you are going to prosper in life. If you keep 10% to 20 tender, okay, okay. But don't disturb us here. I'm going to find this go wrong, keep it 10%. Habo? I don't want to go that direction. But I want to say to you, there is God's way of prospering. And we are doers of... Number three, weapon. <laughs> Number three, weapon. Phew, God, help me, help me. It is faith. What is faith? Faith is the action of obedience. Faith is obeying God to prove that you believe. <laughs> faith is obeying God to prove that you believe. That's number three. Weapon number three. It is obeying God to prove that you believe. You know, we don't know that you believe until you have acted. You know, demons also believe and they tremble. <laughs> they fear. So you, I don't know which side are you. I don't want to deal much on faith, but all of us here have been given a measure of faith. No one here does not have faith. 
So we must stop saying, no, I don't have faith. You have faith. That means you do have a muscle for life. Because faith is like a muscle. If you then go to the gym to strengthen your muscles, that you make them stronger so that you can carry more weight, some things that are heavier than the ones that you ordinarily would carry. So that means if you keep doing and doing the word and or, or moving in faith, you are just developing your muscle. You believe for a car, next thing you believe for cars. You believe for a house, next thing you believe for houses. So you just keep developing your faith, developing your muscle. So God wants us in this year, 2023, to develop our muscle of faith so that we can trust him for greater things than where we are. You see, it is God who will lift us. He's a lifter of men. He will lift us. Amen. I said God is a lifter of men. If we believe his word, he will lift us from where we are. And I believe that before the end of this year, we will all have testimonies of the goodness of the Lord. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of everything that the Lord has declared. Luke chapter 1 verse 45. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of everything that the Lord has declared. Over believe the Lord, you shall prosper. Believe the Lord, you shall be established. Believe his prophets, you shall prosper. Amen. Amen. Number four. This is the last one. Amen. Weapon last is the anointing. The anointing. It is God's ability upon men to perform the demands of faith. Hmm. It is God's ability upon men to perform the supernatural acts of God. So if you are going to be a doer, a zenzo, zama, dotana, if you are going to do stuff, it will be because the anointing, the ability of God is upon you working. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38. And how God, un, uh, and, and how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with great power, and he went about, round about, doing good. So he was anointed, then he went about. So as long as you remain here, it's because you're not anointed. So when you are anointed, then you are able to move about. You see, anointing does not make you sit in one place. Because no one is ever anointed to sit. Everyone is anointed to do. So when the anointing is upon you, something bends you to do something. So when the anointing is upon you, you begin to move about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of, by the devil and because God was with him. Now look, the anointing is God's ability upon men to do the works of God. See, when Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of Satan, it's because of the anointing that was upon his life. You see, when you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that, you know, it took Jesus 30 years for him to be anointed. 30 years. So it, it, it was preparation because there are God's ability on any man is not a joke. God will not release his ability on a man who will take it and play around with it. So by the time it is released into your life, it's because you've reached maturity. There were certain things that when I was growing up in the ministry, I desired to see happening in my ministry. I prayed for it. I cried for it. But I was not ready. And now when I got to a certain level, then God released it into my life. Does it mean that we have to wait for some appointment for us to be anointed? No. You have to grow into the anointing. You have to grow into it. That's why God can say you are a prophet today. But there's a certain level of the prophetic that will not enter into until you grow into it. <laughs> All right. Let, let me do this so that you understand. Come here. Here. I want you to wear my jacket. Does not 
not fit you well. For it to fully fit you and look good in you. Do you know how many people are anointed in this house? But they have not grown into the anointing. The jackets they are wearing, they have not grown. Some are apostles sitting here. People are listening. Some are apostles sitting here, but they have not grown into the anointing that is upon their lives. But I pray to God before we leave this place, those who are apostles to business, because God has anointed you to be, huh? A kingdom financer. You know, uh, you see, let me say this. I understand people who are in my position where they are preaching and that are texts that come to us. But it's not the same as those who are financing the kingdom. They are attacked more. Kingdom financers, people who have a heart to, to, they say, God, if you can give me 10 million, 5 million belongs to you. Or even 9 million belongs to you. I will build your church. I will do this. I will do that. Uh -huh. All hell breaks loose to make sure you never get to that 10 million. Even if you try to get some of things, just some assault and, 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 and everything is scattered. Why? Because of your heart for the kingdom. That's why today I'm releasing an anointing, a dangerous anointing upon those who are in business, who are kingdom financers. Watch what will happen after today. Now let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. Mm. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. So it will be in that day that the burden of the Assyrians will be removed from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be broken because of the fat that will be upon your shoulders. I don't know if you guys have been exposed to the yoke that is placed upon Cows, they put a yoke, a yoke, it's just two, one pole that connects two cows. And then there's what we call a yoke that goes into the neck of the cow. So that it does not move anywhere. It moves one direction, held together by the yoke. But the Bible says here, it shall come to pass. That when the fat on the cow begins to grow, it breaks the yoke that sits on the cow. There's an anointing that is in your life that needs to keep growing and keep increasing. Let me say this. And, and the anointing increases uh, through act on the word of God. The more you do the word, the more you are promoted, the more victory you win, the more you are promoted, the more God increases the anointing upon your life. That means every battle that we fight, it is actually an appointment for another level of the anointing operating in your life. There's no way God will allow the enemy to attack you for no reason. There's always a reason why you're being attacked. It's because you are due for the next level. You are due for the next promotion. You are due for the fat to begin to grow so that the yoke of the Assyrians may be broken from your neck. Today, I believe the yoke of the Assyrians is breaking from your neck because the anointing is, is increasing upon your life. <laughs> the yoke is breaking from your neck. 
You see, this is God's ability in your life. I wish I can share some more on the anointing. First John chapter 2 verse 20. First John chapter 2 verse 20. I'm going to anoint you. If that business was struggling, your name was removed even from uh, where people will hear about your business. It shall be rewritten. It will be written in their hearts. Have you ever seen how demonic demons operate? They announce someone's business. I, okay, it's okay. They announce someone's business. You know, Tigolosh. If you have had Tigoloshes go house to house announcing, they whisper in your ears, in your sleep. You know, the, 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 I had saloon so, so and so. And you heard from who? I just came into my thoughts. We wrap all of that. Your own business is announced by angels from today. I say your own business is announced. Verse 20 says, but you have an anointing. Say, I have an anointing. From the Holy One, you have, you have been set apart, specially gifted and separated by the Holy Spirit. And all you know, that, mm, and, all, and all of you know the truth because he teaches you who? The anointing and illuminates our minds and guards us from error. creative ideas he illuminates our minds there is no one who is dull as long as the anointing abides in him he illuminates he quickens inventive ideas inventive ideas may fresh ideas come into your mind by the Holy Spirit that anointing that abides may you see opportunities when people say there are no opportunities here may God open a door when they say there are no opportunities in Whitbank you know people will say it's better when you are in Jobek things are just faster, business is faster but God can open your mind while you are here where you are, may God open your mind, may the anointing that abides in you quicken your mind you will not be dull again I say you will not be dull ideas, inventive ideas are flooding your mind, you will know what to do <laughs> You know, there are people who want to go into real estate. They want to buy many houses. And I heard from God, don't worry. And begis, and zangas, and begis. I heard from God that there are people here who want to go into real estate and buy houses. You know, student rooms and build rooms. And they want to be landlords. Not of one house, houses. And the Lord is going to give you inventive ideas on how you can achieve that. You can achieve it as a group. You can achieve it as a family. You can achieve it alone. As a group, you can come together and buy one house for one. The next year, you buy another house. The other year, you are buying another house. Another year, you are buying another house for the other person. But inventive ideas on how this can be accomplished. You give yourself five years. You give yourself ten years. Then you will have houses. Houses. By the time you retire, you won't need even the pension from government. You will have enough money flowing for your grandchildren. I want you to know that you are about to be anointed for inventive ideas on how to make money. Some of you are sitting here. Opportunities are everywhere. People are coming from other countries. They are taking over the opportunities because you are fast asleep. This anointing shall wake you up. This anointing shall wake you up. <laughs> Some of you need to sell what you have now in order to buy the many other things. Stop behaving like old people who hang on to things even if they are useless. I see opportunities after this anointing has hit upon your head. I see God doing things suddenly for you. Suddenly doors are open. Suddenly, hey, destiny help us show up. 
can give you opportunities and ideas on how to work out things. <laughs> a man came to me some uh, before Christmas. Uncle Caesar brought that man. He needed prayer because he had some money that he needed to be released from ESCOM. 60 million. He's been struggling for since 2015. I prayed for him. I said, look, what are you going to do for God? He says, look, I do anything for God. I've been doing for God everything. If this money can be released. You know, this man, just two weeks ago, discovered that the guy who was helping him was not doing it right in, in invoicing. So he, he had a fight with this guy because he wanted money, a share, a big share of what this guy has worked for. So this guy refused this one. I will fix you. So he was hiding the way you, in, you, you put in invoice. He went to the headquarters. They told him, no, it's simple. We have checked your way. It's straightforward. It's just that you never presented your invoice through the system. That's why you have not been paid. So two weeks ago, 60 million has been suffering. 60 million. I know what these hands will do. They will open doors. They will cause you to recover things that you have lost. Businesses that you have lost. Ideas that you have lost. It shall be restored back into your life. Doors that were shut shall be broken. Not just open, broken. So that they never close again. The man that stood by the door to make sure that you don't succeed. You will see him no more. I know you're clapping so small because you have not seen. If I were you, I will be celebrating because it is done. The disciples only came the following day and said, Lord, the tree that you cast, look, it is already dry. Jesus said, look, it dried up from the roots the very moment I spoke to it. I speak to all limitations. I speak to all delays in your life. It shall be no more. Where doors were closed right in front of your eyes and you were heartbroken. Rejoice for your time of harvest is now. 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 It is now. <laughs> I said I said a very simple testimony in Switzerland when we were at the fire conference the, on the Monday. We went I went to Spofani and I was supposed to sign something for a church in Spofani. So there's this woman who was busy saying she doesn't want to go to church, she's never gone to church. Okay, if I go to church, will they give me a cell phone? I said, a cell phone can stop you from church. And, you know, fortunately for her, I had a new cell phone in my car. I went to my car, fetched the cell phone. I said, here's the cell phone. I want you in church on Sunday. Because to you, this is what's stopping you. So I gave her. She didn't believe. She was screaming. She switched it on because she thought it was a joke. Switched it on. It is blank. It's new. Given to her. As I was driving from there, going home, I was, I was received a, a, an email from my, uh, 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 my, my son's school. The 20,000 that you owed has been canceled. Someone came and paid. <laughs> you know, if you don't believe in miracles, then at least keep watching and come, come walk close to us. Then you will end up believing. We walk on water every day. We walk on water every day. I say we walk on water every day. I know that what, may, what seemed to be a difficulty in your life, you shall walk on water. I say where there is no way, there shall be a way. Where the doors are closed, they shall open. You hear people are crying. They are saying we don't have jobs, 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 jobs. Why don't you become an employer? You are highly gifted. Become an employer and stop complaining about jobs. God has anointed you. 
The anointing upon your life, it is not the anointing to play around. It is the anointing that was upon Abraham. God has blessed you to be a blessing to the nations of the world. God has blessed you to be a blessing to the families of the earth. You are a blessing to the families of the earth. From your mind, I break the spirit of poverty. So, you know how poverty paralyzes you. It paralyzes your thinking. You have a spirit of poverty. Like, can, can they see how gifted they are? And they don't see that through with their hands they can make money. They can't see. You know, a simple thing. Mom, look at your hairstyle. Someone who can do that is complaining about joblessness. But we are corner. We are such beautiful things. But no, it's in your mind. It's here. Today, your hands will be anointed. You see, some of you think I'm joking. Because you are in a job, you are not in work. Yeah, it's a job to you, not work. You are not enjoying what you are doing. You know something? Wrong time. Anyway, it's Pastor Zandi calling. What's the time? Yeah, but okay, let's close. Let's close. <laughs> You must tell her, guys. We're busy with God's business here. Church is not out yet. <laughs> you work with her in the office, please. Tell. Today is anointing service, so more twelve is your How? No one. What's the time now? Man? 10 to 12. I am a 12. <laughs> you must tell her how. Come down at the step. You know, I was already fire. You know that there was something flowing. I we are You know, this morning I prayed. Then I entered into a room in the spirit. In that room, there was so much peace, glory. And the Lord was saying, I'm bringing my people into this room. Where there's no noise, but glory. God will cause peace to reign in your lives. Meaning the battles that you've been fighting, it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Mom, I, I, don't, I don't know what's happening. Can I just start with you? Can I start with you and your kids? Yeah, thank you, sir. Please come, come here, come here. Where's the praise team? Please come. We're going to sing. I don't want to waste time. So, those of you in business, work, promotions, breakthroughs, whatever it is that you want suddenly to shift in your life. Come, let's break it.
Let's break it.
received. But and then as people were lining up, people were just folding hands. So it's time for us to open our hands and run and release to the seed uh, through what the Holy Spirit has done in this place. Because it's just big. It's some we cannot um, even comprehend what has just happened. I would like to remind our first time visitors again to, to occupy um, the first row of the seats so that we can just show them some love. Amen. Were you blessed, Mazalwan? Amen. Were you blessed, Mazalwan? Amen. What, what, what 